Hi, in this lesson we're going to look at the Ring Wizard tool. And if you haven't already started a new drawing, just come up to the File menu and select New and open up just a new drawing file. And we'll first just maximize our perspective viewport. So remember, just simply by double clicking in the viewport title, we'll maximize that view. So just double click in the perspective viewport title there to maximize that. And if you're not in the jewelry tab, just come to the jewelry tab. And underneath ring here, the little down arrow there allows us to select some of the different tools and builders here. So we're going to click on the ring wizard tool just to open up that tool in our side panel here. And you'll see that will open up here in the side panel. And these rings here are what's called our Fusion Library. And these are all stored locally on your computer. And there's a whole bunch and a whole selection of different ring profiles that you can select to start with. But we'll just pick this first one here, this half round, which is 001. Just double click on that to place that in the middle of your drawing. And to edit the settings for that, we'll come across to this tab here and customize the settings here. So the first thing you'll notice here is that uh, we have a ring size and a ring region size. So uh, if you if you simply click there, you can select the region that you're in. Uh, I'm in Australia and we use UK region sizing. So let me just reselect that. And in terms of my sizing, I'm going to scroll down to a men's size here. This is a men's wetter, so we'll choose say, size V here for Victor, if you're in UK sizing. If you're not in the UK region, if you're in the US or Euro or somewhere else, you'll need to choose a ring size that's uh, similar or uh, close to that. It's 20.3 uh, mil in diameter. So here we've got the cross-section profile that's in use. Uh, I won't change that now leave that as it is and we've got some parameters here now you can there's two ways of adjusting a ring uh, you can enter values in here to adjust for instance its thickness uh, or its width and there are a whole bunch of other settings in here to tweak I'll cover these in, a, in another exercise in a moment um, but let's just scroll in a little bit so use your scroll wheel on your mouse to scroll in and you'll see at the bottom there's a green cross section and that's green to indicate that it's currently active and we've got two gumballs, one to adjust its width and one to adjust its height here. So uh, as I say we can enter the values here on the right hand side in this panel is one option. The other option we've got is we can adjust it through here. So we can just simply either drag on these gumballs to adjust the width of our ring or you'll find it a lot easier just to click or double click uh, on the arrowhead there in the direction that you want to adjust and you can enter in a value. Now if you look at that value it's currently set to 5.17 okay if you come across here you'll see that the width in this dialog box is also 5.17 so they're obviously matched so either if you update it here using this tool or update it here it will adjust. So let's make this say an 8 mil wide band or we can just click on our grid to adjust that and let's adjust the thickness here so let me scroll out a bit and I'll just click or double click on this arrow and it's currently set to actually we'll just leave it at 2 mil that's fine and the other thing I just want to point out here whilst we're here is that there's also the inside of the ring band so that's currently set to solid and there are a number of settings here but you can actually adjust this to a comfort fit around off the inside of that band a little bit and you'll see that's adjusted there or if you want you can use a heavy comfort fit and you'll see that adjusts the curvature of the inside of the ring band okay I'll just change this back to a comfort fit for now and that's it for that ring. Let's just click the check mark or the OK just to close down that tool. And what we'll just do is we'll move this out of the way because we're going to end up with three rings in our drawing here just to show you that same tool again and some other options. So 
Select the ring band. Just make sure that your gumball is active. Now your gumball is active. Uh, if you come down to the bottom of your screen, you'll see the word gumball there. Just make sure that that is switched on for the moment. Okay. Uh, if not, it won't be highlighted so just click on it to uh, highlight it and you'll see the gumball will appear here and that gumball allows us to move objects and scale objects and to rotate them so we'll move this out of our drawing grid a little bit so again we can either drag using an arrow uh, and it will drag in that direction okay or we can click uh, in this case a single click will uh, bring up a dialog box to allow us to enter a value here so if we want to move this let's say 12 millimeters away from our current position we can type in 12 there that's 12 millimeters in this case and press enter we'll move it you can see further away uh, from the center of our our grid there so let's go and run that tool again so we'll do a, a create another ring band here so we'll come to the ring wizard it's under here we'll just click there to open up the tool should open up in the right hand side here and let's just um, start off with one of these I'll just for the sake of it pick the second one just double click there to uh, place uh, the default ring there I think it's two mil wide by default and let's just click here to change and customize the settings here so we'll leave this just at the same sizing uh, you can change it if you want just for the exercise but here's what I just want to explain is the cross-section profiles here so if you click on this little icon here in the corner there it will actually open up the cross-section profiles and we can scroll down and select a different cross-section profile okay so in here for this let's just pick this one RG008 it's uh, just a, it's got a, a little channel or recess in the center of it just double click on that to select that and you'll see that update in the drawing and again we could use the gumball here to adjust the rings width okay or we could adjust its thickness we'll leave this again at two millimeters but let's change the width here let's just make this band let's say seven mil wide so I'll just show you this method of entering your values so just type in seven there and just make sure that you click in one of the other fields just to update that and you'll see that ring updated there okay now if you were to double click here you'll see that again that value there is set to 7 which is the value here so I guess it just depends on what you prefer and what you're more comfortable with some people prefer entering the the information in the fields in here others prefer just to simply manipulate it through the gumballs on the ring itself the other thing let's just have a look here under under here okay we looked at um, using a, a comfort fit before let's just change this to maybe a heavy comfort fit and again you'll see the drawing update and when you click the check mark or the OK button it will close that tool down and that's our second ring now let's move this out of the way again because we'll place one in between these two rings so let's select that ring band that you've just created again you've got the gumball that allows you to move in the direction uh, along the green axis there okay so if you just click on that in this case if we enter a negative value it will move in the opposite direction of the arrow so uh, a positive value will move closer towards um, the other ring or in the direction of the arrow if I enter a negative value let's say type in minus 12 here We'll move it minus 12 mil away from its current position so minus 12 just press enter on your keyboard to update that and you'll see that's now moved out of the way and what we'll do is we'll place another ring here let's go to the ring wizard and click on the tool there and let's choose that that second one again 002 let's just double click to place that and click here to adjust its settings uh, we'll leave the size again as it is as I say you can change that if you wish but the other thing I just wanted to point out here is underneath this little dialog box here is the option to do a scooped fit so this will scoop out the uh, inside of the band and what you can do is specify the thickness of that scoop here okay so 
let's, for example, let's just change uh, this to be 7mm wide again. Click in one of the other fields or your grid to update that. Uh, we've still got this little dialog box that's appearing. Can we get rid of that? It seems to be floating in my drawing. That's okay. Now, if I specify a thickness here, this will be the, the, uh, the thickness of the wall. So let's make this, say, 1 mil. And if we come down now, down under here, we can adjust for a scooped ring shank. And, uh, oh, look, it's changed to 0.8. That's, that's fine. Oh, here, we can change it here. Sorry. There's 1 mil there. So that sort of becomes redundant, doesn't it? They must have changed that in one of the recent updates. But look, um, you should be able to specify a scooped fit down here. You could almost get rid of that there because entering a value here actually does create a scoop uh, from the inside and it maintains a certain wall thickness. And you'll notice that as you increase that, it increases that wall thickness. Um, let's leave this at 1.2 mil. So we've got a 1.2 mil thickness here and uh, 1.2 mil thickness in, in the top of the the ring band but it's hollowed it out for us so let's just click the check mark or the OK button just to close that down and now we've got the three ring bands in here so let's just have a look uh, at a couple of quick things here let's just change to our rendered display that's uh, this little blue sphere here we'll change our display mode so that we switch to a rendered display They'll display in the default material, which in this case is gold, but we can change that. So just as part of the exercise, let's just come over here to the Rhino Gold Materials tab. It's indicated by this little gold sort of coloured sphere. And let's come down to the tab called Metal. And we can simply select a metal here and drag that onto uh, the ring band and uh, it, it will change to that material. So let's say uh, this first one's going to be, uh, let's say, 18 karat rose gold. I can select that and just drag it onto my ring shank and uh, uh, my ring band and uh, it will update that material. Now let's look at this. Actually, we'll leave that that outside one is gold, we'll change this one, let's say, to white gold. So again, uh, we can just select the material and drag it onto our ring band. And there are a number of different finishes you can use. So if you look at the bottom, there's a polished finish, a hammered finish, which personally doesn't look too good. There's a sandblasted finish as well. So if we switch to select, say, sandblasted finish, again, if we select the material, and drag it onto our ring, you'll see that that material will update uh, and, and apply that finish to the ring band. If you zoom in a little bit, you'll see sort of the effect of that material on the band, okay? Um, so it gives you sort of a quick sort of preview of what the ring will look like in that material, which is handy. Uh, the other important thing just to let you know is that there is also a, a materials uh, weights tab and that can give you a quick idea for quoting purposes, what the approximate weight of that will be in the selected metal. So if you come across to the metal weights tab here, um, you can select one of the rings and you can see what its weight will be in certain metals and certain alloys. So for instance, um, let's say white gold here. I'll just um, hold my shift button down here and just select this range here. Uh, actually, I can just hold my left mouse button down here um, to select that group. But you can see there's the different white golds, okay? 18 karat white gold is uh, 12.7 grams, okay, for that ring. And you can do that with any of those ring bands. You can come in and see what the metal weight is. So in, well, and this one in, is in yellow gold. In uh, 18 karat yellow gold the scooped one or the one that's actually got the channel in it uh, is 11.6 grams okay and this one here which has got the scooped uh, out inside in white gold in 18 carats uh, just under 10 grams 9.8 nearly 9.9 .9 grams okay so it's a handy method for quoting someone uh, you simply just had to add a, a small amount uh, for a sprue and you can easily give someone a quite an accurate quote for 
that ring in, in that size in that metal. Okay, that's it for that exercise. If you want to save that, you can come up and come to File and Save As and give that a name and save it in a folder somewhere. But uh, you don't have to, otherwise it was, as I say, just a quick exercise to give you an overview of the Ring Wizard tool in Rhino Gold. Alright, thanks for your time. Bye.